super deformed, kind of a Pidgey version of Green Arrow. That might be the thumbnail for the uh, video today, guys. Alright guys, so I'm sitting in front of Tate's Comics in Lauder Hill, Florida. Let me spin the camera around so you can see the front face of what the actual store would look like. Um, they have these weird looking faces. Tate has always had this throughout all their incarnations of all their stores. It always looked like that. Uh, here's the name of the location. Again, it's Tate's Comics in Lauder Hill, Florida. Let's head inside right now and see if we can find anything really cool in this toy hunt. Alright guys, right in front of the actual store, they have this nice little uh, front end cap of some holiday themed uh, comics. Looks really, really cool. In the uh, of course, holiday uh, feel. Some of the really tall, big action figures. Uh, this is from, I want to say, maybe NECA over here for the Deadpool. It could be wrong though on that one, but it looks like maybe NECA. But it looks really cool. Nice looking Captain America right there. Sorry, apologies for the glare. But looks really, really cool. Let's keep moving through the store, see what else we can find here. And they have a nice little selection of mystery minis. So spin around, take a look at those guys. Here we go. Nice uh, display of them here. Again, I'm not sponsored by Tate. I'm just showcasing some of the cool stuff they have here in the uh, Tate Comics in Lauder Hill, which is their main uh, location. But they have a lot of stuff. If you're looking for any type of mystery boxes, they got rows of it here. Here's the Pine Size Heroes. Looks really nice. These are just uh, one-shot deals here. These are five bucks for Pine Size Heroes. I think you get two guys in a package. No, you get one piece in a package. I think they sell these in two packs as well. But it looks good. Nice little mystery boxes of plush versions of Guardians. I haven't seen these yet. These look nice. Uh, I don't know if they're Funko. I don't want to say they're Funko. Nope, this is Zaga Toys. I've never seen these before. These look really cool. Not bad price here for, uh, I think these are, what, $7 for this, which isn't too bad. You get a little clip on guy here that you can put on like a little lanyard. Has a little lanyard, oh, there you go, right there. Of, uh, we have Groot and Rocket. Looks good for Guardians 2. You have some Mad Max there for Funko Mystery Boxes. Looks great as well. Minions fans. There you go, Minion guys. These are uh, and another series of lanyards, they look like. Uh, I think these are, these again, $7. Uh, decent collection of them. If you wanted to see what was in the entire wave, let me get back there. Here we go. These are all the guys that are available in that particular wave. They have uh, 12 of them here, and there's Groot right there. But there's 12 of them in this particular wave. More pint-sized heroes right there. But again, nice selection of mini mysteries here. I do like this collection. Ooh, they have Kirby! 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 Uh, wrestling fans, they have some Funko mini mysteries as well. So, again, Psyduck. Duck, 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 Psyduck, Psyduck. That's right, I am a geek and a nerd, and I'm damn proud of it, but yeah. So, I'm gonna move on to another section of Tate. So let's keep going and see what we got here. And one thing they always have over at Tate is it's a glass case. You can do random trading for some of the mystery figures that you saw on the other side. You can crack it open in the store and you can trade items out if you have something that you like for other particular pieces. This particular shelf that you're seeing here is not tradable, but I think on the other section they will trade, but certain areas uh, they won't. But I believe, I think on the other side of this case, let's take a look at it in a second, let's spin around to it right here. They have a bunch of pins for you pin fans. Bunches of pins, but I think this side right here is the side to have for all their trades right here. This is the trade section. So a lot of the mini mysteries that we are looking at, you can actually get some stuff uh, little arcade cabinets, which I don't think these are playable. I think they're just, just for collectability's sake. They look nice. I like the way they look. Nice, really cool shredder. I think that's Kid Robot right there. I believe. It looks, yep, Kid Robot for $40 for that guy, if you're curious. But yeah, these are all loose, tradable. So if you saw, let's say, for example, this Starfire right there for the bombshells, and you wanted that Starfire, you could trade the item that you buy out of this particular wave for that figure. Went to their section that has sort of the new stuff. So let's spin around and take a look at that right here because this one's really cool. Um, you guys know I don't really dig NECA mainly because of the quality control. But here's the new wave of Predator figures. This is really, really cool. This is Mar uh, Markeiko, Macheko, who is probably the only uh, human-esque Predator. She was brought into basically the Predator tribe and storylines for their comic books. So she's a female Predator. Uh, she's got the plasma caster right there. 
Uh, there's her face, there's Macheco. I don't know if I'm gonna get her or not. I'm debating to pick her up, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I'll kind of surprise you guys at the end of the video what I actually pick up at Tate's today, but I'm not entirely sure. Here are the three predators are available in the wave. So that's Macheco. Here is Broken Tusk. This guy's working, wearing this green heavy armor, but he's really neat looking because he comes with a massive, massive blade. He does have an alien's head as a trophy he's wearing right there, which looks really neat. His helmet looks really cool as well. But here's the, the guy we were just seeing. This was Macheco, of course, we were looking at a second ago. But Broken Tusk looks really cool. He has this massive, huge spear. Apologies for the glare, guys. This massive spear. I might get him. I'm not 100% yet on that, guys. Uh, and of course, a really cool looking Deadpool. This is the uh, the Q Pops, I believe it's called Q Pops wave. I believe, I could be wrong now. Finders Keepers, looks really, really cool. Um, this is from Alter Ego. It's a Marvel item from Alter Ego and Key Finder is, like, I think the company, uh, I'd never heard of this particular company before, but it looks really, really cool. It's Deadpool, kind of super deformed, shooting upside down. Looks really, really neat. I don't know, guys. Uh, the price point of this one was only 28 bucks. So this one's not badly priced, in my opinion. Uh, we have another Deadpool item here, which is a Deadpool uh, Beast Kingdom. This is $80. Uh, pretty big box, though. Looks really, really cool. There it is right there. Looks neat. 80 bucks, though? I don't know. Hit me up again in the comments if you think I should get something like that. This is the two-pack for Marvel Legends. This is uh, the AIM two-pack. This is a city uh, figure builder, army builder set. You can build different characters from. They have lots of different head sculpts. You can make them look different ways. So if you're looking for a nice army builder two-pack, a bit pricey at 50 bucks, but $25 a figure if you really think about it. But this could be a really, really good army builder right there. Uh, this one looks really cool. This, of course, is Robotech. Uh, price point is $35. This is Roy Foker's VF1S, otherwise known as Skull Leader. Uh, looks good. Um, I don't know for $35 though, guys. It, it looks really, really good. I like the way it looks. Uh, it looks like it's highly, highly articulated. It looks like there's a lot of points of articulation. It does convert into Jet, Greywalk, and Battleoid mode. But I'm not sure. This price point here is a bit steep, in my opinion. Uh, let me know in the comment section, what do you think? Do you think this is a good buy or not? Hit me up, please. All right, guys, they have a Power Rangers section. They do have Power Ranger stuff here. They have the laser blade. Uh, I don't know if it has Power Rangers. It might be from a different line, but it looks really, really cool. It looks sort of Power Ranger-esque. They have stuff right here from Ninja Force. They have blind boxes right there. They have the Dorbs over here. And your Funko. As I said, they broke stuff out into different sections. This is the Power Rangers section, so they have a bunch of Funko stuff there. They have Tour the Shuttle Zord. Uh, a bunch of free uh, rebag figures, as well from old classic Power Rangers. A bunch of Power Rangers from the movie uh, Mini Pops, which look always great. And a huge selection of comics, as you can see right here. And then they have a showcase as well. Uh, but it looks like they only have one thing in the showcase, which I'll spit over to in a second here. Which is the... Uh, the the, the, uh, this was uh, Lord Zed's guy, I believe. The Dragon Serpentina, Serpentina, I believe it was called. But I could be wrong. I don't remember some of the older Power Rangers stuff, but I think that was what it was. Here's a Ninja Megazord right there and an open, uh, open uh, bag of figures right there. Uh, we have, uh, looks like, uh, sort of Ultraman right there. We have the repack of the Green Ranger. This is what I talked about before on the, my videos. Not a bad price point at $84, all things considered. It normally sells for about 50 bucks. This would be a definite buy, in my honest opinion, because you get the new sculpted head, which is the same, it's the same sculpt, same design as the original Green Ranger for SH Figure Arts, which was the 2013 release, I believe. But this is the 25th anniversary, as you can see the logo right there. But it comes with the new head sculpt. So the head you could swap on and off with this head sculpt right there. Same thing with the Red Ranger, uh, uh, Jason one, that's what I couldn't remember his name, but Jason has the same deal as you can see right there, pardon again the glare, but he has a 25th anniversary version of the Red Ranger for SH Figure Arts as well, and he's the same price, he's $84, which all things considered is not really that bad of a price, Loyal Subjects right here, and a signed Pink Ranger, which is Kimberly, which is very, very cool, and here are some open ones right here of, SH, of the Loyal Subjects as well, and of course, Tate has their comics. We have first parents of Gambit right there. 
uh, priced 250 only because of the condition of the book. The book's in very, very good shape. I have an 8.5 one myself, goes for about $95, fully graded, but they're selling for about 250 bucks here. So some of the price books here are very, very pricey. Uh, one of the first Wolverine issues, uh, this was his, his first, uh, not his first appearance, but one of his first mini series was the one where he was doing the Come Here Finger. Uh, really cool issue, only $40 for that one. So yeah, these are some of the more higher end books. They have this in a special case. I'll kind of pull back a little bit so you can see the case. That's what the case would look like. So they have some really cool stuff here. They have Watchmen. They have Dr. Manhattan right down there. Looks really, really good. And then they have some of the really cool statues. This statue is really neat. This statue right here is in four pieces. Um, you have a Spider-Gwen piece, a Carnage piece, a Venom piece, and of course a Spider-Man piece. And the full diorama looks like a side of a bridge. The problem is that each one of these segments goes for about 100, that Spider-Gwen's 179, the Carnage is 149, this one here, the Venom one is 159, and the Spider-Man is 169. So you're looking at, you know, a $400 statue piece all combined together. It looks cool, but a bit pricey. Again, panning back up, we have some classic X-Men right there. More Spider-Gwen. The Vulture looks really good. Huge wingspan. We got a nice Spider-Gwen right there. Really cool looking uh, Psylocke. Uh, Spider-Woman right here. We have Spider-Man, another one. We have a really cool looking Electra, kind of focusing on her head right here. It looks really good. Nice sculpt work on that Electra. Uh, we have Lady Deadpool and a Deadpool bust. Looks really, really good. A really sweet Rocket Raccoon right there. We have Thor from Ragnarok right here. Moving over, we have some Wonder Woman stuff right there with a nice display of Wonder Woman with the bracelets, golden lasso, and, and the uh, headband, the tiara. A really cool looking Harley Quinn with a nice pumpkin in the air saying pow. Great head sculpt as always. Uh, more of a Dark Knight Batman right here. Really good looking. As we have the Superman Batman from the Dark Knight right there as well. We have a really cool looking Superman with heat vision eyes right there. Really cool looking Green Arrow. I've never seen this Green Arrow before. It's kind of super deformed, kind of a Pidgey version of Green Arrow. That might be the thumbnail for the uh, video today, guys. That looks really cool. I like that Green Arrow. Uh, Bat Signal. Lois and Superman. Right there. Really cool looking classic Superman. Harley on a bike. The Trinity, of course. Right there. Right there. Good Trinity shot. We have uh, Black Manta and Aquaman from the new Aquaman, Aquaman movie. And some Suicide Squad Jokers. Deadshot, Will Smith, and some great Harleys. Perfect Harley reading the book with the prison outfit on. Looks really, really good. Harley right there. Harley on the pole with Joker in the background. And on the top here we have some Batmans. Right there. Apologies for the light in the background. Kind of gives it a weird glow. I think that's Sandman. Yeah, Sandman, right there. Uh, another Harley. We have Joker. And this, these are kind of uh, highly articulated bookends. They're not, not articulated, highly detailed bookends. That's what I was looking for. Uh, very, very different homage to Joker and to Harley. And, of course, we have here from Gotham, we have uh, Gordon right there. And a really cool Harley and a plate, if I can get away from the glare. Looks really, really good. And over here to the side cabinet, we have some more Harleys. We have a power battery which I actually have that power battery and that Sinestro. Great Superman with the kryptonite chains coming off. We have some Wonder Womans and some Jokers right here. And a huge section of Harley Quinns. If you're a Harley fan, they have tons of statues here for Harley. Massive amounts of Harley Quinn statues. A little bus of different figures for DC. I think, yeah, that looks like all DC stuff, yeah. Uh, we have some bombshell stuff coming up here. Great Batgirl, love that Batgirl pose. Looks really, really nice. All these are bombshells for the bombshell line. And then we have a bunch of Supermans at the top here with a few Harleys sprinkled in between. We have some Katana, some Hawkgirl. Uh, we have a Power Girl right there, Zatanna, and a Catwoman. And of course, when you come to Tate, you gotta see the big old Hulk. I'll pan the camera up so you can see what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, big old Hulk. <laughs> Hulk smash. And of course they have Stranger Things stuff here as well, nice Funko based products, some uh, Universal Monster stuff right there, some classic Universal Monsters, Dracula, Frankenstein, the Mummy, but swinging back over here we have some It stuff, and this is sort of like their horror 
themed section, which looks really, really cool. I'm actually going to be going to a concert this coming uh, next in 2019 for, you guessed it, Iron Maiden. They do have Iron Maiden reaction figures. They have a nice Aces High here version of Eddie, which looks really, really cool. I like the way he looks. And they have multiple versions. They have Killers, Aces High, The Trooper, and Power Slave. Different versions of Eddie throughout different Maiden concerts, or covers rather. Uh, they have a nice version of Chucky for 30 bucks, not too bad. A small version of him, which looks really, really cool. Love the way he looks. Looks neat. Comes with a, a massive amount of accessories here. Multiple knives, multiple hands, multiple weapons, multiple heads. Nice head right there. Looks really, really cool. Uh, they have a bunch of Ash figures. These are all NECA. This is the, one of the later, uh, I think this was season two of Ash. This is the Asylum Ash when he's in the psychiatric ward, which looks really, really cool. He's all in his uh, kind of uh, lashed together suit and his chainsaw. We did a full review of uh, Ash, one of the Ash figures from the NECA line. That was Henrietta right there from, of course, the, that one season, second season of Ash. Some Stranger Things stuff again. And one thing I was thinking about doing a review for, hit me up in the comment section, is the Veruvian Hacks figures. These are three and three quarter inch figures based around mythology stuff, like gods and, and like, you know, stuff like Hercules and that sort of mentality. This one is the Eos Warrior. It's sort of this translucent red material. They're on cards so you can slide them out of the case. These are their own property. It doesn't go for like any company. This is from Boss Fight who makes these products. But they have a bunch of different figures, a bunch of different reskins of figures. One of the things they do a lot of are these Gorgon based figures or these snake based figures. I think this would be a really cool review. Uh, hit me up in the comment section if you want me to do one of these figures. Maybe one of the snake figures. The only figures that they have right now which are humanoid without the snake bit are the cursed skeleton which is this green neon skeleton right here and the eos warrior again they have a bunch of the snake figures like diff different ones like this one right here is the coral gorgon this is the boa constrictor one so they're using the same body just for different looks here's the black racer right here would you guys want me to do a review of one of these snake figures i think that would be really really fun to do a review for because i have not yet done one for the ruby and hacks figures and there's a lot of figures out there moving down we have freddy excuse me we have uh jason for friday the 13th this one looks really good 30 bucks which really isn't that bad as a, of a price here it's a big beefy figure and for $30, it really isn't that bad, horror fans. What do you guys think? Is this a buy? Is this a pickup? It looks really, really cool, actually. And they have, again, more Iron Maiden stuff, Legacy of the Beast, which looks very, very cool. And let me swing back around real quick here, because this is their Godzilla section, or Kaiju fans love this stuff here. This is typical old-school Godzilla. Uh, look at that. Old-school Godzilla. This is what Godzilla looks like back years and years and years ago in black and white time. It looks really, really good. Love the way it looks. They have Godzilla 1999, or excuse me, 1989 right here. Another Godzilla for 2004 right there. But it looks really, really cool. And of course, with the newer version of the Kaiju stuff, which is this right here, which was Pacific Rim. Looks very, very good. Another Robotech item. This is more of a, 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 a re, uh, reaction series for Robotech. There are a bunch of different figures. These are not convertible. These cannot change forms. 15 bucks, just like the uh, Eddie figure we saw a second ago. Same company, Reaction Super 7 makes these, which looks very, very cool. And there's a battle pod. Uh, who else do we have here? It looks like you got the you got the SDF-1 right there. Let me kind of take it off here so you can see. They have SDF-1, much bigger, bulkier figure right there. Again, there's no conversion for these figures. You might have saw it a second ago when I was taking these things off the peg or flash by it real quick. Ultraman. That's right, Ultraman is out as well. Nice little plushie of Ultraman. Looks very good in his little fighting pose and the little sensor, you know, has five minutes of power to fight for. That's how long he normally can fight for. The SH figure arts of a bunch of uh, creatures. I think these are part of the either Ultraman series or uh, Godzilla series. And we have Ultraman himself, $59.99, SH figure arts, classic company making very, very highly articulated very cool figures. If you want some really great figures, guys, SH Figure Arts is a company to go to. Uh, super posable, lots of art articulation, lots of accessories. Very, very cool figure. Absolutely a go-to in my honest opinion. 
And of course we have some Game of Thrones stuff, some tarot cards, some more Funko. As I said, as I said before, they have a bunch of Funko stuff in, the, in certain sections for that property, not just mixed in all over the place. So they have some uh, Game of Thrones stuff, the map of Westeros. They have a nice Sansa Stark right there. They have a nice uh, Daenerys. Looks really, really good. Then we have, of course, we're in the fantasy section, so we have the Lord of the Rings stuff. I want that Cylon Raider, but I really want the Viper version. This is the big stuff from the Eagle Moss that came out. They have a Viper version of both the original Viper and this one. I have to get that very, very badly. Not necessarily the Cylon Raider, per se. There we go, better, less glow. Not necessarily this, this Cylon Raider, but I want a Viper, actually. So, yeah, that's what I'm really, really looking for. Uh, more, you have Doctor Who down here. We have some Dark Tower, some X-Files, as you can see right here. We have Valerian. And we have some Venture Brothers stuff as well. Not bad. Not bad, guys. Dark Tower's right there. And now we head over to the Transformers section. I know there's a lot of subscribers and viewers of my channel that do like Transformers as well. And they have a bunch of open content here, a bunch of open product. And some of the pricing isn't too bad, especially for the older stuff that you can't really get any longer. Especially if you don't really care about the packaging. Uh, this is really cool for loyal subjects. This is a selected Megatron uh, individual card. Um, price is a bit much at $30 right here. It looks good though. Uh, and one thing about loyal subjects, I, I harp on them a lot. And it's true, their price pointing is extremely expensive. This is a, uh, this is a San Diego Comic Con exclusive right there. International, which is this Megatron, which is most likely just a reskin, it's a repaint of what the Megatron figure would look like. But it looks good actually. For 30 bucks, a little too pricey in my opinion. Another loyal subjects one right here, which is uh, Optimus Prime. I've seen this at Hot Topic because this is a talking Hot Topic Optimus Prime. That's why I just mentioned it. Uh, this is from uh, Brainstorm, from more of the Generations line, which looks very, very good. I do like the way it looks. Again, all open figures. If you're looking for some decent Transformers stuff, they have it here. Uh, they have a masterpiece, Rodimus, which looks very, very good. 250 bucks, though. A mm, bit pricey. An Optimus masterpiece. Some comics. Some more stuff in the case. These are more of the expensive items, that, as you can tell by looking at it. Again, these are all opened. An original G1 Metroplex right there with all his weaponry. This is only for 35 bucks, which I'm assuming is... It's both pieces, I'm guessing. It, I, I mean, it's all this plus the Metroplex, which is not that bad. A little Megatron bust, which looks pretty cool. Trypticon, right here. They have some of the smaller Minicons. They have Brawn and Wind Charger, but those are custom-made boxes, as it says there on the, on the packaging. Some old-school Blue Streak. One of my favorite Transformers of all time was Blue Streak. One of the guys I got first, Starscream. We have a Hot Rod right there, another Starscream, which is being re-released right now, guys, in Walmart. If you're looking to get one at a decent price, which would probably be this one right here. It's about $35 at Walmart. Walmart, this one right here I'm showing you. This one looks to be a Japanese version of it. So right there, as you can see, it's a Japanese version of Starscream. Just go to your local Walmart. You'll probably be able to find it. It goes for about $35. Bucks. I believe the cost is. Same thing with this Hot Rod. This hot rod you can get at Walmart right now for about $25, I think it is. It's about this cost that you're seeing right here, which was $29. Bucks. So if you're looking for one for a decent price, you can go to your local Walmart to get one. Uh, the looks like a Superion, I think this is Generation 2 Superion, or maybe from Energon. It's a different version of Superion from the Aerial Bots. Then we swing over here to some G.I. Joe. They have a bunch of G.I. Joe stuff here. I used to have a lot of G.I. Joe stuff in my youth. I'm a big fan of Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. More Snake Eyes than Storm Shadow, but I do like both characters and I collect just Snake Eyes. That's just me personally. A, a bunch of opened uh, vehicles, the X-30. So they have some really cool stuff. The other X-30, which was a Python Patrol one, I believe, right there. But again, and then over here, they have a bunch of figures in the case. These are all individually uh, loose figures in little boxes or they're actually mint on card as well as so you can see me going to the top here. Again, apologize for the glare. There's a snake eyes right there. I can see by looking at him. Uh, he's $20. This one's 20 bucks. So not that bad of a price point, in my honest opinion. A lot of uh, army builders, if you're looking to build like your, your forces for Cobra, a nice snake eyes in sort of Arctic gear. That one is $20 as well. And a bunch of loose figures and right there, more loose stuff. 
and they have a bunch of comics and Funko items as well. Let's uh, move over here. We have some T2, some Terminator stuff. Terminator stuff as well. We have nice Arnold and some Robocop. Looks really, really good. Kind of spin over to here. We have a Predator and a nice Predator in the background. Nice, uh, one, probably a 1 6 scale or 1 8 scale Shadow Predator. He's 225 as far as price. The lift, the power loader for Ripley for Aliens. Looks really, really nice. Judge Dredd as well. So let's move on to some other stuff. In a second, we have some Lord of the Rings. We have Smog from Hot Topic. Looks really, really good. Let's head over somewhere else and move down to another part of the store, guys. And another Arnold property here, another franchise. Looking at some Predator stuff. I showed you that Predator in the front, which I might be getting, the Macheco one. I'm thinking about picking that one up. I think that one looks really, really good. They have a bunch of alien stuff here. Go back a little bit so you can see some Prometheus, which is part of the Aliens franchise, of course. So it looks really, really nice. There's a power loader, which I don't... That might have been the same power loader we were just looking at. It, it probably was. An Alien Queen. Let me grab this real quick here. I think it's a bank. Feels like a bank. Yeah, this is a bank. Really cool looking Alien Queen. Rah. Nice looking uh, alien head. About 30 bucks for this, but again, not my cup of tea per se. Yeah, there's a slot right there for the uh, coins. Not my cup of tea. If you're looking for a really cool looking bank, you might want something like this. Looks neat. We have some more alien stuff at the top here. They have a blue alien, which is an alien warrior. And they have a bronze version, which is the identical warrior, just in a brown color. So you can get either the brown alien, this one, or you can get the blue alien, which is this one right here. They both look good. Uh, both have a price point of $27. They have muscle figures for Alien now. That's right, muscle came out years ago in the early 80s, which were wrestling figures, but now they have them in uh, Alien uh, skins as well. So they did variants of them, which is really cool that they did different items. It looks like a queen right here, or a big uh, warrior right there. Looks good. So it's a two-pack, but it looks really, really neat. I, I do think it looks great. For Master Universe fans, they do have Master Universe stuff here as well. A lot of He-Man stuff. Uh, some vintage stuff, some new stuff as well. Some stuff that's right on card. That stuff been opened, which, I mean, for a vintage Evil Inn, I mean, not that bad for 28 bucks. As long as you get the original figure and all the accessories, that's all you really want. That's a blast from the past right there, guys. Buck Rogers, one of my favorite shows of, of fantasy and sci-fi, or sci-fi and fantasy, rather. Uh, I love Buck Rogers. This one's a walking Tweaky, which is his uh, service droid. This is his drone, actually. It looks really, really good. Gil Gerard, Aaron Gray, classic Buck Rogers motif. Love the way that figure looks. Looks awesome. Uh, we have this guy here, which is Thun uh, uh, Thundercats. Looks really, really good. A Bandai figure, which I think is from the newer stuff. We have a bunch of turtles. Well, actually, what, well, before the turtles, they have more He-Man right there and Snake Mountain. You have turtles and Thundercats right here. Some newer stuff. Nice action piece of uh, Shredder. Some more trans, uh, more uh, turtles right there. Nice Krang. That Krang looks really good. Look at Krang right in the middle. Looks really, really good. Nice Krang statue. Uh, price is three hundred dollars. A little bit pricey for that. Uh, some. Uh, Legion of Superheroes, you had, looks like Lex Luthor's Jet and the Supercar, Superman Supermobile is what they call it. Delta Probe 1 for 50 bucks and the Superman car right there, Supercar, $35. And looks like you have some uh, Indiana Jones stuff right there, which is very, very cool. And of course, when you head over to Tate's, one thing that's always a constant is the Star Wars memorabilia. Tons of uh, small packaged figures that have been brought back in in cases, little boxes. Uh, some very, very old school collectible vintage stuff is in here. Uh, kind of pricey, which is on another case, which we'll talk about in a second. This looks really, really cool. I just noticed it. It's a Boba Fett. Uh, it looks like a, it's an animated cell. That's what it is. 60 bucks. If you really think about it, that's not that bad for something that looks like this. There's the price right there, guys. So, I mean, it, you might think it's very expensive, but these things are very highly in demand, highly collectible. Uh, some plates right there. Some older vintage stuff right here. I don't know if it's old, original vintage or not. Now, they have a bunch of uh, pre-packaged stuff that's loose. 
this is where the vintage stuff I would assume is at, more of the expensive stuff, but I don't think it's that bad pricing wise. Uh, cloud car right there, Raincore, Luke, and 3PO. We have the Wampa. Again, more uh, prepackaged stuff, which isn't too bad. I like this right here, Star Wars Unleashed. These things are very, very cool. That right there is not a bad price for this product. Uh, you can't find these Star Wars Unleashed figures anymore. They're, they're, they're staction pieces, but they look really cool. I'll take it off the shelf so you can see what I'm talking about. It looks really, really neat. Um, it, it happens to be a, a clone trooper in this pose. You can't really pose them anywhere else. It, this is the, the, it's stuck in this pose, which is, I'm, I'm all right with. The other ones available were Chewbacca and a Luke, which looks very, very cool. Uh, and then they have their stuff behind glass, more stuff. These are more statue-esque pieces, or they could be uh, like a Hot Toys where it's posable, usually in a six-inch scale. One, oh, rather, excuse me, the one-sixth scale, not six-inch, one-sixth scale. This ray here looks very good. Look at that face sculpt right there of Daisy Ridley. Looks very, very good. Jin Urso, some busts as well. The uh, Daku, Daku, I think it's Daku, version of Ray. Some Vaders, the original Leia, which looks very, very nice. We have some Imperial Guards with the Emperor, which looks very, very nice. And uh, this guy looks really cool. This Stormtrooper right here, this is a por blue and white porcelain version. He's holding a little porcelain uh, cup. He looks very, very cool. Very nice looking Stormtrooper. And we have, of course, Captain Phasma. And some of those items which were showcased here, which are the original packaging for some of those products. This uh, deluxe version of Boba Fett, which looks just amazing. 267 deluxe version. Kind of pull back a little bit so you could see them. I, I think this one right here is this Boba Fett right here. I think it's this Fett right here. He looks great. That just looks dead on. He's got the Wookiee braids under the arm as well. So, yeah, it's either that Fett right here or this Fett. One, one of the two. It might be this one right here. I think this one right here. Yeah, this one right here is the one I just showed you a second ago. That's the deluxe version. Nice Django right here as well. And we can't go away without looking at some Star Trek stuff. Some classic Star Trek product. Um, some of the uh, Playmate stuff, I believe it was. Next Generation, these are all, I believe that is Diamond Select stuff right here. I want to say it's Diamond Select. Nice Warbird right here. I actually got my hands on the Defiant one. I got it as a gift, which I'm going to do a review for. Which, if you're not familiar, that's the Defiant right here. I got this one right here as a gift for my girlfriend because I really wanted a Defiant. Uh, this happens to be a larger scale version of the Eagle Moss Defiant. But I'm definitely going to be do a review of that Defiant of the uh, Playmates version, which is this company right here who makes this one. So that's going to be a review down the road. I just haven't done it yet. So they do have multi-set packs now, if you were not knowing, if you didn't know. This is the Mirror Universe version of Star Trek for Eagle Moss. I apologize for the glare. i got a different angle so you can see it. This is a multi-pack for Eagle Moss. Instead of getting single ships like these here, you can buy them now in a, a Eagle Moss multi-pack. Uh, this is about, I think one want to say it's $80 for this. And this is, I think, four ships. Put it right here. Excuse me, this is, happens to be $60 for this one. So you get three ships on this one in the Mirror Universe, which, of course, the Mirror Universe was the when the Star Trek universe was bad. The Star Trek, the Federation was no, not a good Federation. They were bad guys. They weren't good guys. And I think the Klingons were, were good guys, or the Romulans were good guys. It was the, the bad guys were the good guys, the good guys were the bad guys. That was the twist to it. The Europa, which looks very, very good. Very similar to, let's say, the Reliant. I'm not sure if it's, it's from Discovery, that's what it is. Uh, I, I don't watch Discovery, so I can't tell you anything about it, but I wanna show you guys just a feel of the Star Trek stuff as well. All right, guys, my hunt at Tate Comics in beautiful South Florida is complete, and I did not pick up the Marcheco Predator action figure from NECA. I kind of was on the fence to pick it up. I might pick it up in a later toy hunt. Let me know in the comment section below, should I actually pick up that action figure from NECA? I did pick up one item. I showcased it briefly off in the video, and that's the Reaction Super 7 Iron Maiden Aces High Eddie figure. Because of the concert I'm going to, I want to get a display sort of case for this and hang it up. I think it's a really cool action figure. 
And what's kind of funny is because near me, my location, there is a restaurant called Rock and Roll Ribs, which is created by Nico McBrain, the drummer of Iron Maiden. I'm hoping sometime in the future to bring this figure in. Hopefully he can sign it for me. I think it'll be a very cool figure to get signed by Nico McBrain, the drummer of Maiden. But I want to showcase this off to you guys so you can see what it looks like. This is from the Super 7 series. Very similar to reactions. I think it is a reaction, yeah. It's a reaction figure right here. It's very simple articulation. It's 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 a G.I. Joe scale figure, but it doesn't have a super amount of articulation like a G.I. Joe figure would. But it looks really, really cool based off the Aces High uh, album that came out for Pilot Eddie. It looks really, really cool. I love the way it looks. You have Killers right there. Uh, Killer Eddie, you have the Aces High Eddie, you have the Trooper Eddie, which I wanted to get, the Soldier version, and you have the Power Slave Pharaoh figure of Eddie, which is, I think, Seven Son of the Seven Son. But it looks really, really good. This is the item I did pick up over pick up over at Tate's, and I hope you like the video review of kind of the walkthrough of Tate's comics. I want to showcase off to the audience who have never been to a comic store of that size before. They have a ton of uh, product, a ton of different properties, and I wanted to showcase it to you guys so you can see what it would look Look like in the beautiful South Florida area. I hope you like this longer extended toy hunt. Definitely click that like button. Always click subscribe. When you subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon to be notified of my latest videos. Of course, last but not least, you click Windows over here to watch more of my content. Take care, guys. I'll see you next video, and bye-bye.